the memorial of Mary, mother of the church, is relatively new in the church. It was added to the calendar in the last few years. And that is a celebration of the fact that on the day after Pentecost, the day after we celebrate the true beginnings of the church, we remember Mary. And, you know, there are lots of feast days of Mary over the course of the year, and so what's the value of another? For whatever reason, this morning as I thought about that, I thought about my grandma and grandpa, my mom's parents. And when we were kids, especially when we were smaller, we were told that there were times that when grandma and grandpa were staying with us, we weren't to bother them. Because every morning, grandma and grandpa would go off into separate directions and they would pray the rosary. And they did the same thing every evening. It was always the same. Every day, morning and evening, they stopped to pray the rosary. And we were never supposed to bother them because they were praying and we needed to respect that. It was the model of their praying. I remember one night when I was a kid, it's one of my early memories, getting up to use the bathroom in the middle of the night, what I thought was the middle of the night, but then we went to bed at 7.30 in those days. <laughs> you know, walking by my parents' room and their door was open. And both my mom and dad were kneeling next to their bed, praying together. Now, I remember every Sunday, my mom carried a St. Joseph Daily Missal to church. It was the same thing. And the routine was is that after communion, my mom, even long after that missal was outdated, the Latin had been dropped and we were all in English, she still had prayers in the back that she prayed every day every Sunday after receiving communion. And then it was passed over to my dad, and he had prayers. And we didn't leave church until they had both had a chance to pray the prayers that they loved. These were models of prayer for me. You know, and they make a difference. Somehow, when you know your parents pray or your grandparents pray, that that prayer is important to them, it makes all the difference in the world. It means when they talk about faith, it's not something that they talk about, but, but something that they find really their consolation and their hope and their promise. And I think that's the most important thing we pass on, that somehow it isn't what we say about what faith means in our life, but reflecting what it means by the way we live, by the way we live that life of faith, that matters. In the first reading, we hear of the last appearance of Mary in the, gospel, in the scripture. And it is in that upper room on Pentecost, where among all the other disciples, Mary sits in that room with about 200, and she sits there praying. And it was on her that the Holy Spirit has descended for a second time, not to conceive the Lord Jesus within her, but so that she could share the very life of Christ that descended with the gift of the Holy Spirit. And we hear in the gospel how Jesus gave his mother to us as he died on the cross. He gave her to us to be a model. Because of all the things that Mary did, you know, it isn't just opening her heart, her mind, her life to the gift of Christ, but she followed him faithfully. She followed him down through Galilee to Samaria to Judea. She followed him to Jerusalem. She followed him even to the cross. And we celebrate her great faith, her discipleship. And we pray that somehow you and I will model that as well. Today, we celebrate a relatively new feast, but something that is an important reminder you know, we have the saying that talk is cheap. What matters is whether or not we walk the talk. Mary did that. It's a reminder that that's what we're called to do as well, to live in a way that makes our faith known. Or as St. Francis said, preach always, and when necessary, use words. <laughs>